For today's lesson, uh, we're not really using any new math, it's just we're applying it in different situations. Uh, so this is going to be applications of logarithmic and exponential functions. Um, so you should have a packet that says notes, that's what we're doing all of our examples out of. So our first example, uh, a ball is dropped from a certain height. Every time it bounces, it rebounds three-fifths of the previous bounce. So we're going to write an equation. So if we think about this, on the first bounce, it's going to be 3 fifths, and then it's going to be 3 fifths of 3 fifths, and then 3 fifths of that previous answer. Um, so what you're going to end up doing is multiplying 3 fifths times each other. So we will write that as 3 fifths to the x. Uh, for b, how much of the original height will be after the fifth bounce? So we're just going to plug in 5 into the equation. Okay, And you would just type that right in your calculator. You're going to get an answer of 0 0.078, okay, which is about 7.8% if we want to write it like that. So on the fifth bounce, it's only bouncing 7.8% of what it was on the first bounce. Uh, so then on which bounce will the ball be 5%? So we'll set the equation equal to 0.05. Okay, and then we need to solve this equation. So like I said, there's not new math, it's just applying it. Anytime we're trying to solve an equation where the x is our exponent, we're going to use logarithms. So I'm going to work sideways here because we don't have a whole lot of room. So I'm going to take the natural log or log, doesn't matter, of both sides. Okay, that allows me to take this x and bring it out front. using the power rule. Okay, so then I'm just going to divide. So my x is going to be this divided by this. Again, type this in the calculator. Make sure to use parentheses carefully. You'll get about 5.8, which means it's going to take six bounces for it to be less than 5%. Okay. We have two general equations that we're going to use to represent uh, exponential growth and exponential decay. You don't have to have these memorized. You'll be told uh, when to use them and you'll see different letters in different equations, but this is the structure that they will come in. So this first one, n, is going to be the amount at time t. The n naught, or the, the value that's in this position, is going to be your initial amount. Um, and that makes sense because if we plugged in a zero here, this whole thing would go to one. So that's just at time zero, that's the only thing that's left. R is going to be your rate of growth or decay. If the equation is representing exponential growth, then r is going to be a positive value or greater than zero. For decay, it's going to be a negative value. Um, and it'll be as a decimal. So if it like decayed at 30%, for r, you'd make that a negative 0.3, which would make this whole thing uh, 0.7. The last variable here is t. And this will be true for both. This is just time. So how many, how much time has passed to zero? years, uh, it can be years, minutes, seconds, it just depends on the situation. Okay, this is our other one. So y is going to be the amount at time t. Okay, a is going to be our initial amount. And again, algebraically, if I plug in a zero for t, that whole thing goes to one.
E is our value E. E is the growth constant, E. K is our rate of growth, or decay again. And again, if it's growth, K is going to be greater than zero. If it's decay, gray is going to be a negative value. So if you see a negative here, we saw graphically that makes it exponential decay. Uh, and that's what we're going to see here. And then last, T, again, is time. All right, so for our next example, according to the U.S. Census, El Paso County had 516,929 people in the year 2000, and then 576,884 people in 2006. Uh, so we're going to write the general equation uh, where T is years since 2000. So if we're using our general equation here, we know an initial amount and we know a future amount at a specific time. So I can plug all of that into this equation to find R. That's the thing I don't know at this point. Okay, so for my amount at time t, that's going to be the 576884. My initial amount and 2000 is going to be this 516. And it takes six years to go from there to there. So my t is going to be six. Now we're algebraically solving for r. So first move is to divide. OK, next thing to get rid of is this sixth power. I can do that. Uh, by raising both sides to the one-sixth, or the same as taking the sixth root. Uh, so I'm going to move over here. So 5, 7, 6, 8, 8, 4 over 5, 1, 6, 9, 2, 9 to the one-sixth equals 1 plus r. Next up is to subtract 1, so my r is going to be that whole thing. To the 1 sixth and then minus 1. At this point then you type it in the calculator to get a calculator accurate answer. Uh, we're going to have 0 0.018. So what we're asked for in this question is the general formula. So now we'll use, and you can use whatever letter you want, I'll just stick with N, is going to equal our initial amount, which is still 516929. And then in the parentheses, it's going to be 1 plus R. So 1 plus 1.08, or 0.118 is 1.018 to the T. We're now going to use that in a couple of follow-up problems. Uh, so the next one says, use your equation to predict the population in 2015. So we're just going to take our general equation and plug in 15. To the 15, when you type that in, and we'll round to the nearest whole number since we're talking about population, is about 675,000. 534. And if you need help with the calculator step, I can, but I figure you guys can plug stuff in. Okay, the last part of this, when do you predict the population will surpass 700,000? So we're going to take the equation and set it equal to 700,000 and solve that equation. So from here, the first step would be to divide. Okay, then we'll take the log of both sides. 
you can do log base 10. I tend to do just natural log. That's going to equal the natural log of 1.018 to the t, which we can then bring that out front. equals t times the natural log of 1.018. The last step then would be to divide by the natural log of 1.018 uh, to get our final value. So if I take this and divide it by that, I'll squeeze it in here. All over the natural log of 1.018. One eight. Type that into the calculator, again with careful parentheses, gets you about 17. So when, we want to be more specific, when is going to be in the year 2017. Okay, our third example is going to be similar, uh, but we're going to use the other equation. So here we've got the population of Colorado at two different times. So it's 4,301,261 in the year 2000 and 4,753,377 in the year 2006. So we're going to use this equation. And again, I have two points. So what we need to solve for is the rate of growth. We don't know that part. So we're going to set our equation equal to the 2006 value equals our initial value is 4301261E, K we don't know, but T we do, that's going to be 6. So algebraically we're solving this problem, first by dividing. That will leave me with e to the 6k. Then I'll take the natural log of both sides. Okay, and it's okay to know if you're taking the natural log on this side that the natural log of e is just going to be simplified. So this whole thing just equals. 6k. So this is equal to 6k. So my k is going to be the natural log of that quotient all over 6. Type that into the calculator and you get approximately 0.0167. So my general equation from all of this is going to be y equals my initial value e to the point 0167t. And again, we're going to use this for some follow-up questions. For b, when do you predict the population uh, use the equation to find the population in 2015. So we're going to plug 15 in. Okay, again, just type it into your calculator and round off to the whole person. So 5,525,690. Would be our predicted population. For C, when do you predict that the population will surpass 5 million? Well, we know it's somewhere in between 2006 and 2015 since it's over 5 million, but we'll algebraically find it by setting the equation equal to 5 million. So we're going to have 5 million equals 4301. 
0.261e to the 0.0167t. And we'll solve this algebraically. So first divide. And as you do more of these, feel free to skip steps because it'll be pretty repetitive. Okay, then I'll take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of this just leaves me with 0.0167t. And then my last step is to divide. So my t, I'll move over here, is going to be that whole thing. divided by 0 0.0167. When you type that in, we're going to get a time of approximately 9, which means in the year 2009 would have been the predicted value for when the population surpassed 2,000, or 7, 5 million. Okay, a good example for exponential growth is population growth. A good example of exponential decay um, is the half-lives or the, the decay of certain um, radioactive things. So carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years, which means the amount that there is decays by half every 5,730 years. So when we're, we're going to find the value for K using one gram as an initial amount. So we're going to end up with one half equals one e to the k times five seven three o. Oh. Okay. So we'll take the natural log. So natural log on this side is just going to be five seven three o oh k. So k is going to equal the natural log of one half over 5,730. This is going to get you a very small value, and your calculator will likely give this to you in scientific notation, uh, but what it's going to be is negative 0 0.3 zeros followed by 1, 2, 1. So in the calculator, it's going to be negative 1.21 times 10 to the negative 4. So that means you have three zeros before you get to the one. Okay. In B, a caveman is found in Palmer Lake. The femur is taken out to get carbon dated. It is found that there are four grams in the bone. When alive, the bone would have 12 grams. Uh, how old is the caveman? So we have a final amount of four, an initial amount of 12. Our K is 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, and we are solving for t. So we're going to divide. Then take the natural log of both sides. And you can reduce this to 1 third if you want. And then divide. So natural log of 4 twelfths divided by negative 0 0.000121 gives us a value of about 9,079 years. The next concept we're going to talk about is Newton's law of heating and cooling. And before we fill in this, um, these variables, uh, I want to do a little thinking about what, what this is going to be representing. So you can add this to your notes or you can just watch. Um, so think about this situation. You have a 100 degree cup of coffee in a 40 degree room. We're going to graph over time what's happening to the temperature. So there's two important numbers here. There's 100 and there's 70. Okay, the temperature of the water at time zero is going to be at 100. 
and it's going to approach the room temperature, so it's going to fall. But as it gets closer and closer and closer, it's going to it's going to level off there because the the temperature of the coffee can't reach and it can't go lower than the room temperature. So it's going to approach 70. Um, so this is our general equation. So now we're going to look at how this relates to our given equation here. So you'll notice this looks like exponential function with a plus c. Okay, we know from the previous unit that if I add something to the function, that moves the whole thing up and down. Well, in this case, the the horizontal asymptote, rather than being at zero, like a normal exponential decay would be, is going to be at 70. So that c value that we're adding is going to be uh, that, that 70. So this is going to be our c in this case. The a is typically what the initial amount is here, but the initial amount is 100. But we're taking this graph that would be approaching the y-axis and we're shifting it up. So the a is going to be the value that this would be prior to the vertical shift. So it's actually going to be the distance between those two. So for this one it would be 30. Um, for the general equation we'll talk about what that means. Okay. So let's fill in these variables. Okay. The y is going to be our temperature at time t. Okay, C is going to be that vertical shift, which is always going to be the surrounding temperature. Okay, A is going to be the initial temperature minus the surrounding temperature. Okay, and then K is just going to be our constant of, it'll just be a constant. Okay, so in general, I showed you what a cooling problem would look like. So cooling is going to look like this, where it approaches the room temperature from above. Heating is going to start at a temperature lower and then approach the surrounding temperature. So what's going to happen here is the K for both of them is going to be negative because it's exponential decay. The difference between here and here though is it's reflected over the y-axis. So it's going to approach, the A is actually going to be negative and that will happen when you do this calculation anyway. If your initial temperature is lower than your surrounding temperature, this is going to be a negative value. I just wanted to explain why that would happen. Okay, so we'll do a couple examples of this. Uh, so an outdoor thermometer reading 85 degrees is brought indoors. Uh, the indoor temperature is 72 degrees. Uh, two minutes after the, two minutes later, the thermometer reads 83 degrees. Uh, using our law of heating and cooling. Uh, first, what are the values of A and C? So A is always the initial minus the surrounding. So the initial temperature here is going to be 85. The surrounding, the room temperature, is 72. So my A is going to be 13. C is always the surrounding temperature. It's the value that the, the graph is approaching. So C is going to be 72. Now we're going to use the fact that we have two temperatures at two times to find the value of C or K. So the temperature we know in two minutes the end temperature is 83 so that's going to equal our A value of 13. E to the K we don't know but our time is going to be 2 plus 72. Don't forget that plus 72. Now we will simplify. So I'm going to subtract 72 first. Then divide by 13. 
Then take the natural log. And then that'll just be 2k. And then we'll divide by 2. So our k is going to be the natural log 11 over 13 all over 2. When you type that into the calculator, you get negative 0 0.083. So our general equation is going to be y equals or a equals or t equals, uh, that doesn't matter, 13e to the negative 0.083t. So this next one I'll go through quickly. So how long will it take to read 75? Oh, plus 72. I said don't forget it and then I forgot it. 75 equals 13e to the negative 0.083t plus 72. Subtract. Divide. Take the natural log. And one more divide. So t is going to be the natural log of 3 thirteenths. So there's not new math here, just where we're using it. So that's about 17.6 minutes. Alright, one final example here. Uh, to be more involved in your schoolwork, your mom and dad learned about Newton's Law of Heating and Cooling. At 1 a.m. Saturday night, your parents heard something downstairs and went into the car to discover a warm vehicle. Uh, using a Newton's Law of Heating and Cooling, your parents decided if you had made your midnight curfew. The temperature of the vehicle's engine block when your parents went into the garage was 75 degrees. Exactly 13 minutes later, the car had cooled to 60 degrees. Assuming that the air temperature is 10 and the temperature of the engine block when it was shut down is 100. Okay, we're basically going to figure out, did you make your curfew? Uh, so we have three different times in temperature. So at a mystery time, the car was shut off and it was 100 degrees. Okay, at 1 a.m., the temperature was... 75 at 1 13 a.m. it's at 60 degrees okay so what we're gonna do to find this is we're gonna we need to find the value of K and the value of K is gonna be constant throughout the whole thing so I'm gonna treat this like my initial for now we'll find the K and then we'll reset 100 to be my initial temperature so for the first part of this the end temperature is going to be 60. My A is the initial temperature minus the surrounding temperature. K we don't know, but we know it took 13 minutes to get there. Our surrounding temperature is 10. So we're going to subtract. This is going to be 65. Divide. natural log and finally divide by 13. So k is going to be about negative 0 0.0202. So now my general equation going back to 100 being my initial my temperature is going to equal 100 minus 10, the initial minus the surrounding, e to the negative 0.0202t plus our surrounding temperature of 10. So that's our temperature. Uh, what I challenge you to do is to see when the vehicle was shut down to see if you made your curfew. So if you go through with all of that math, uh, same solving, you can pause and see what happened there. 
uh, but we get an answer of it took 16 minutes to cool from a temperature of 100 to a temperature of 75. So the temperature of 75 occurred at 1 a.m. The vehicle was shut down at 12.44, 16 minutes before then. So did you meet your midnight curfew? Nope. All right. Um, so that's a, a fun example of how we can use exponential functions to model a situation um, and solve for what we need.